okay so yeah in the last uh, slide we saw that uh, pipeline can have two types of stalls mainly one is due to dependencies and one is due to uh, jump instruction so do you know what they are called one is called data hazard that is uh, stalls caused by data dependency and uh, the other one is called control hazard due to control instructions there can also be structural hazard anyone knows what it means so that is what we actually saw in the last slide like uh, we told that we need to duplicate many of the hardware resources otherwise multiple stages can conflict so that is an example of structural hazard like we don't have enough structures in the pipeline or data path to execute all the instructions together so now uh, we will see about data dependency so first what is the difference between a data dependency and a data hazard so the uh, difference is data dependency is uh, for the sequence of instructions so it it is not dependent on any pipeline or any execution structure it's only uh, we are given a sequence of instructions and we can tell whether there is any dependency but to tell whether there is any hazard we have to see if those instruction sequence will cause any uh, stalls in the pipeline so only when we know the pipeline structure we can uh, tell about the hazards so i think more many people have problem uh, or telling about dependencies the main problem i think comes from transitive dependency so we will see one example and uh, i think you will understand so basically there are three types of dependencies one is called true data dependence then output data dependence and anti data dependence so a true data dependence means we have some write to a memory location and followed by a read so basically we want to read what we have written so that is called true data dependence and output data dependence means we write to one location using one instruction and uh, later on also write to the same location and anti dependence is the opposite of true data dependence means we read from a location and after some time we write to the same location so actually the output data dependence and anti data dependence are not uh, not important for uh, our pipeline means what is meant by our pipeline i mean uh, mean that whatever questions we can expect in gate because uh, these two data dependence cause problems only when we do out of order instruction execution in uh, in all the questions we assume that the given sequence of instructions are executed in the same order so in that case these two dependence will never cause a uh, stall so basically they won't cause any hazard so the only uh, hazard can come from true data dependence or raw data dependence so now we have a sequence of four instructions so yeah so first instruction is writing to r1 from memory location second is doing add between r1 and r2 and storing in r2 so this is what i told it like which is the destination register will be clear in the uh, question so here it is going to r2 uh, here it is moving data from r3 to r1 and finally the r1 value is stored to memory location b so what are the dependence here we see in s2 we have to add r1 and r2 and r1 is coming from s1 only so that is a write in s1 and read in s2 so that is a true data dependence now if you see s3 is also writing to r1 and s1 is also writing to r1 so between s1 and s3 we have an output dependence then between s2 and s3 we are reading r1 in s2 
we are writing to R1 in S3. So that is anti-dependence. And in S4, we are reading R1 and R1 is written in S3. So we have a true data dependence. So that is what is shown in this diagram. The true data dependence is straight lines without any symbol and output data dependence has an O mark in between and anti-dependence is having a dash in between. So here we have two true data dependence, one output dependence and one anti-dependence. So most uh, confusion comes in uh, this one, S4. So we are reading uh, R1 in S4 and R1 is written in S3, but the same R1 is also written in S1. So at some places people count uh, S1 to S4 also as a true data dependence. Uh, and it uh, it is correct as per uh, many definitions given, but um, actually there is no need to consider that because uh, it, uh, it is uh, anyway implied transitively. So if any question comes in gate, you, you can follow this method only. So that is for the final, uh, for the true data dependence, consider only the previous write, not anything before that. Is it clear? You all can, okay, yeah. So we will see one more example here, a bit more uh, larger one. So, yeah. So here we have a load instruction. So load means, uh, yeah, so from this memory location. So this is indexed addressing mode, means whatever value is in R1, uh, that added plus added to zero that will be the address and from that address the value is getting loaded to f0 and in second instruction we are adding f0 and f2 storing in f4 likewise so if you see what are the true data dependence here we are writing to f0 here we are reading from f0 so between one and two we have a true data dependence uh, yeah and in third instruction, we are writing to writing the value f4 to r1, the location pointed to by r1. So again, we have a true data dependence between two and three for f4. Then, yeah, uh, in fifth instruction, we are reading f0, which is written in fourth instruction. So again, that is a true data dependence. And similarly, between five and six also, we have a true data dependence. Okay, so I hope this is clear. So we can uh, see one question. Okay. Okay. Can you see this question? Okay. Yeah, I think you can see. So, yeah, the question is to find the number of row hazards in the above instruction sequence. So, we have one, two, three, four instructions here. And we have a five stage pipeline. So, yeah. So first, we, if you assume that there is no uh, dependence, this is what we get. We have uh, five instruction, uh, four instruction, five stage pipeline, and in eight cycle we will complete the execution. But now we can see the dependence. Uh, in the second instruction, load word. 
Yeah, uh, we need R1 because R1 is the address where uh, the operand is located. But R1 is getting calculated in the first instruction. So only after the first instruction is completed, we can start the second instruction. So yeah, there is a true data dependence between one and two. And then in the third instruction, we need R1. But R1 is not uh, modified in I, uh, I2, but is modified in I1. So again, between uh, I1 and I3, we have a true dependence. And in fourth instruction, uh, we need R1. And R1 is modified in third instruction. So between three and I3 and I4, also we have a true data dependence. So here we have three. Uh, one. Yeah. And uh, between I2 and I4, also we have a true data dependence. So we have four uh, true data dependence. But uh, we are asked for the number of raw hazard, not dependence. So we have to see the pipeline now. OK. So this is the pipeline considering the uh, dependence. So if you see the first instruction, it executes as normal. In five cycle, it will be completed. But in the second instruction, it needs the value of R1. So uh, in the second cycle, it will be stalled. In the third cycle also, it will be stalled. And uh, in the fourth cycle, mm, yeah, so why uh, instruction fetch is not happening here? So the only the execution stage is dependent, right? Load word. So the instruction fetch and instruction decode could have happened here. But uh, why it is not happening? It is due to the pipeline structure we saw in the uh, last presentation. Because after each stage, we have a register where uh, the data are copied. So now uh, only when yeah, only when the previous instruction uh, goes to the next stage. Okay, I think I will make it clear. Okay, so suppose instruction fetch is happening here instead of the stall. Uh, and after that, uh, this will, uh, the output of this in, uh, instruction fetch stage, that will overwrite the output of the previous stage previous instruction <laughs> so yeah but i think this diagram is not perfectly correct mm, instruction fits. yeah so for now i think you can uh, assume these are not important so only the execution stage we can focus on so the execution stage of second I2 can proceed only after the completion of I1. So that is why after I1 is completed, that is after write back, I2 is executed. And uh, the previous two stages can assume it happened before that. Yeah, And so this will uh, ensure I2 is getting the correct data. And uh, what about I3? I3 was dependent on, again, I1. But uh, when it comes here, anyway, I1 is completed. So I3 is not causing any hazard here. But I4, I4 is dependent on both uh, I3 as well as I2. Yeah, so its execution stage can happen only after both of these. So again, it is causing a stall. And so if we count the hazards, this will cause one hazard and this is having two hazards. So that is why we will get three row hazard for this question. Okay, 
okay so now um, how can we get rid of these hazards one of the common method is operant forwarding so in this question it is given that assume that there is no operant forwarding that is why uh, each instruction waits till the completion of the previous instruction before doing the execution stage so now if there is operant forwarding what happens is when is this uh, like i2 is needing uh, r1 but when is the uh, value of r1 uh, come like done so here uh, it, it is an add instruction right so r1 value will be completed after execution stage so can this i1 pass this value directly to i2 if that can be happened then this ex stage of i2 can be moved two cycles before means here it can happen and if i2 ex ex stage of i2 comes here basically there is no store this will be uh, id stage and this will be if stage and that will be like a normal pipeline so that is how operand forwarding works like if a uh, future instruction needs a data as soon as the data is computed it will be forwarded to that so here if you do ex stage to ex stage forwarding uh, between i1 and i2 there will be no data hazard and similarly between uh, i3 and i4 uh, here it's a load word so load word means we will get the value only in the m stage memory stage so from the memory stage we have to forward to execute stage so if you see here even if you do a uh, operand forwarding we will still have one store you can try it between i3 and i4 but between i2 and i4 i don't think uh, there won't be a store so basically if with operand forwarding we can reduce two of the uh, raw hazards in this pipeline for this instruction sequence so i hope this part is clear now we can see the control hazard yeah so this is a previous gate question okay so we have fetch instruction decode fetch operand execute write operand uh, one two three four five stages and we have different delays and there is an intermediate storage buffer which has a delay of one nanosecond so as we have seen uh, in pipeline basically we have to take the uh, stage with the lowest speed which will be the uh, here it will be 10 nanosecond the third one right fetch operand yeah so all the stages should work at 10 nanosecond speed and uh, intermediate storage is having one nanosecond delay so the effective speed will be 10 plus 1 uh, 11 nanosecond now it is given that a program is consisting of 12 instructions and i4 is the only branch instruction so what happens with the branch instruction i will yeah i will just show an example so there are two types of branch instruction one is like this there will be a simple jump instruction and it will be some address the other one is conditional branch so this is jump on carry so it can be anything jump zero jump carry jump positive jump negative anything so jump carry means uh, the previous instruction whether it has set a carry or not so which one is better for pipeline conditional or unconditional so it depends like in classical pipeline uh, conditional was better but now unconditional is better because what happens here is we have a jump and it is jumping to an address 2000 okay so if you see the uh, pipeline diagram the first four instruction will execute like normal 
but when the i5 comes uh, it is a jump instruction so uh, so it is going to the address 2000 so the instruction which is coming here i5 uh, should be from the location 2000 so when yeah so only after this address is known the instruction uh, fetch can start right but in the like if the cpu is so uh, intelligent it can actually uh, check the instruction sequence beforehand and knows that the instruction fetch should be from this location so in that case it won't cause any stall but if you normally just uh, increment the pc and uh, takes the next instruction then uh, it needs to get this 2000 value and after that only it can uh, fetch the next instruction so in this question yeah it is telling that i4 is the only branch instruction and its branch target is i9 so that means in the 2000 location we have i9 and the branch is taken during the execution of this program so that means it's a basically a conditional branch otherwise it will always be taken right so that means this question is like this jump on carry yeah so again what happens if the branch is not taken so it will be like So if there is no carry, basically this instruction will be uh, done and after that this will be executed. So that will be like a normal execution sequence. So basically if the branch is not taken, uh, we don't have any penalty or any stall in the cycle, in the pipeline. But uh, all these are assuming that we don't have a branch predictor so actually in uh, uh, in modern pipelines we do have a branch predictor and that will for every branch instruction that will uh, predict whether it should um, it, it will be taken or it won't be taken so whenever the prediction is true uh, there is no penalty And what happens when prediction is false? So when prediction is false means, uh, say in I4, uh, we go to the execution stage. And in I5, we will have started fetch instruction, decode instruction, and here fetch operand will be happening. And at that stage, it, it is realizing that the predict branch prediction was wrong. So what will happen is all these will be undone and again from the fetch instruction um, the new instruction will start so that is the penalty whole pipeline uh, will need to be flushed whenever the prediction is uh, wrong but anyway for this question we don't have any prediction anything required so this is actually a very simple question like the only thing needed here was like from after i4 we have to wait till the EI stage and only after EI stage we will know this condition say it's jump on carry or it can be any condition but that will be set after the execution stage of the I4 only and uh, after that uh, we can start the I9 so that is why we have one two three cycles stored here and uh, once I9 is started it will again continue like a normal pipeline so finally, we will need 15 cycle and 15 into 11. So it's it, it was actually quite simple pipelining question. And most of the questions will be like this. So if you know the structure and working, uh, most of the questions uh, will be straightforward. So yeah. Yeah, so that's all. Do you have any doubt? Okay, so if you have any doubt, you can ping in the group. We will stop here.